Hi everybody! In today's lecture, we will learn how we can design a phasic compensator for feedback control systems using Franklin's domain analysis. The phasic compensator has an exact the same structure with the phasic compensator. The only difference is this alpha is in a, in a different interval. If you remember, in the phase lead case, phase lead, alpha was an element of 0 and 1, and in this case, alpha is an element of 1 and 50. So technically, alpha is a coefficient or a real number which is greater than 1. Okay, so if you focus on this transfer function, in, uh, we can kind of relate this to a uh, well known different controller. So let's look at this. Okay, this is kc, ts plus 1, t alpha is plus 1. Let's pick alpha very big. Okay, it's a very big number. So as you can see, this can be approximated by kc, ts plus 1. And technically, this will dominate the behavior, and it will be t alpha s. And as you can see, this is approximate a PI controller. Okay, so if you remember the basic idea in PI controller is we put an integrator in the numerator. If you pick alpha very large, it will never be a PI controller, but still it will have a kind of positive effect on the state state of performance. Okay, so it's not as like uh, the rela relation between phase it and PD control is more direct. The relation between phase like and PI control is somewhat kind of loose related, but they're still related. Okay, so let's forget that and uh, look at the body uh, structure of the phase capacitor to better understand how we can proceed with the design. Okay, good. Okay, so this is the uh, body plot or frequency response functions of the phase compensator. As you can see, it's very similar to the lead compensator, but only thing is because alpha is greater than one, we have a low pass filter. Okay, so it's starting at zero dB, but instead of increasing, there is a decreasing ramp, and at this state, state it reaches a steady state value, which is minus 20 log alpha, its magnitude. Phase is similar but shifted. As you can see, we have a negative phase, so it's a phase uh, compensator. It starts from zero and it goes to zero. Okay, so if you kind of uh, notice, I didn't label the center frequency in the phase compensator because in phase of compensator, we really hate this region. And this is kind of unwanted region, and we don't want to use this, okay? This is a bad region, because it's bringing a negative phase, which has potential bad effect on phase margin of the system. Our goal is trying to push this region as like, far as possible from the like uh, gain crosser frequency, such that it won't affect our phase margin of the system. So what are we going to do? Okay, so we are not going to use the phase, but the important thing is, as you can see, at high frequencies, the response is zero. Let's change the color again. Uh, zero degrees, which is good. So it's not changing the phase, but it is shifting the magnitude, okay, in negative direction. Okay, so it's kind of uh, adding a uh, magnitude scale at high frequencies, like it's just suppressing the system. And by using this shift, if the uh, phase characteristic of the system is good enough, we may just pick at uh, good like uh, points such that we can satisfy our phase margin requirement. This will be the basic idea. In the phase compensator, we focus on the high frequency uh, response. Based on this shift, this magnitude, we somehow design alpha, and we design T based on the fact that we don't want this like negative phase region to affect our phase margin computation and uh, phase margin region, we technically pick T such that our basically gain crossover frequency is located in this region. Okay, so this will be the basic idea. And in today's lecture, I will uh, focus on mainly uh, graphical design, but you will see that design of a lab controller is much easier than the lead controller. And in general, you don't need to do any iterations. You don't even need to check the final result. Okay. So it's the same problem, as you remember. So same transfer function, okay? Same state state error requirement. So we want phase margin around 45 degrees, and we always know that we need some margin. Let's say margin is like five degrees, okay? We will still get some errors because of like uh, 
like we will assume that it's zero phase, it won't be zero phase. So it's always good to add some margins and this is our system. So what we do is first, based on the steady state requirement, we design KC and we know that since it's the same uh, requirement, KC is equal to 10. So what we do is instead of looking at the G and G of C, we modify the plant as this, turn over S, S plus one. Okay, now it's our main plant. Our controller is now in this form, T S plus one, T alpha S plus one, where alpha is technically greater than one. Okay, and the goal is first finding alpha, then pick a suitable T such that this alpha have a good effect on the phase margin of the system. Okay, so now let's look at the border plot of G hat S or G bar S uh, and uh, continue with the design process. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, very good. Okay, so so this is the boiler plot of this, and uh, the goal is uh, using the magnitude shift of the system. So what are we going to do? It's very simple. Uh, let's remember our phase margin requirement. Phase margin requirements is so let's clean this. Okay. So phase margin is equal to uh, I think it's like 45 degrees and we at some threshold such that at the end because of the some errors and approximations uh, it won't affect our like result much so it's good to have an, uh, adding a threshold okay so in the phase like compensator design especially if I'm designing using graphical tools I don't choose epsilon a priori by looking at the boiler plot I picked a good epsilon such that the my numbers, the frequencies, and other kind of like uh, the scales end up being good. Okay, the next thing is, so let's ignore the boiler plot, uh, no, uh, magnitude plot, let's ignore this. Okay, so let's pick a very big number, let's ignore this. So let's assume that we don't even see that, okay? And let's assume that we can shape the magnitude plot, but not change the phase plot. Let's pick a point in the uh, phase axis, such that it will have a uh, phase margin requirement like this. So what are we doing to this? We will try to shape the magnitude plot such that it will fit a desired gain crossover frequency. Okay, let's look at that. So normally we are here. So as you can see, originally it is like we have a 18 degrees phase margin, but we want like more than 45 degrees. So if peak Take this point, it will be 45 degrees, right? Because this distance is 45 degrees. But we need to add some threshold. So what we can do is let's pick this point, okay? So let's go for 50 degrees, okay? So let's now, okay, good. Okay, now we can even click that, no problem. Okay, so. We pick the point and we want our new gain cross of frequency to be this point, and this point is exactly 0 0.8 radian per second. Okay, so at this point, my phase is 130 degrees, and if I manage to put my gain cross of frequency here, my phase margin will be approximately equal to 50 degrees. So, what am I going to do? Let's remember the uh, high frequency behavior of the leg compensator. Okay, at high frequencies, no change in phase, which is good, but it shifts our magnitude in negative direction. Now let's look at our new potential gain crossover frequency. At this frequency, as you can see, G magnitude of like M J omega G prime is equal to 20 dB, right? So we have a magnitude. So we want this to be here. So we want to push this magnitude to the 0 dB line. So what we can do is, as you remember, at high frequencies, we we like, so if we design a leg compensator, which will look like this, okay, and we know that at this part, the phase will be zero. So this is like exaggerated. Uh, then it can cancel this effect such that the resultant or the plot will have a gain frequency of 0.8 rating per second. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's look at this. 
So I know that the magnitude of leg composite at the high frequency region is equal to minus 20 log 10 alpha. And this is minus 20 log 10 alpha. What I want is simply minus 10, minus 20 log 10 alpha to be equal to minus 20 dB. So I want log 10 alpha to be equal to 1. So alpha is equal to what? 10, right? Which, this is great. Okay, so if I pick alpha is equal to 10, like this, this will have a minus 20 dB magnitude. And if I technically kind of put my T, like the center frequency in a correct position, I can cancel this magnitude such that the border plot will now at least pass through this region, right? So it will be like this, potentially. Because at high frequencies, my magnitude shift is like equal. Okay, good. So we picked alpha. We know that it will have a like a gain shift of minus 20 dB, which will be helpful for us because we are just kind of pick this point as our design point. Okay? So now next uh, phase is picking T such that this bad region is not affecting our like uh, gain cross of frequency. Okay, so. Let's look at this like phase. As you can see, if you look at the approximate uh, like plot, so let's clean this to better see everything. Okay. So let's look at the phase. Okay. So let's clean it again. So and let's concentrate the magnitude uh, approximate water plot here. So it starts zero. It goes up goes up, goes up. So at this point, the approximation goes to zero, dB, uh, zero phase. And the actual frequency goes like a couple of degrees, maybe like three, five degrees, but we add margin error. So maybe if we choose 10 over T less than the name, less than or equal to the gain cross of frequency, it may be enough because we already added a margin, so this small difference can be okay. And this was generally what we prefer. Okay, so what we do, okay, I'll show the result here. We will pick, okay, no, no, this is good. Okay, so we pick alpha is equal to 10, and this is our new potential gain cross of frequency, and we should be here, it is 0 0.8. Okay, radian per second. So we want 10 over t less than or equal to new gain cross of frequency, which is approximately equal 0 0.8 radian per second. Okay, so t should be greater than or equal to 10 over 0 0.8, and it is equal to 12.5, since this is a good number. Let's choose 2t 12.5 seconds. Okay, so normally, if I'm in that like exact environment, I pick a little bit higher than this, maybe like 13, sometimes even 15, but there is a like a bad effect with, that comes with the uh, like compensator. So it's good to pick a slightly larger number, but not too much. So, so let's choose T. Okay, we know alpha and we know T. The good thing is we finished the design. Okay, so let's look if it's correct. Yes, it's correct. This is our now control. Okay, so what you can do is you can test if this phase the compensator satisfies your requirement. Okay, but uh, unlike phase the compensator, uh, since we are changing the uh, phase, we are adding a magnitude shift, it's changing gain curve for a second thing, and changing phase again. So we don't have this kind of iterative like problems. In general, phase of compensator errors comes from the approximations, and it's kind of hard to uh, redefine the approximation in an exam environment. In general, if I'm like in the, have a computer, I test the result in the MATLAB. Okay, so this is my controller. This is my plant, and let's check the final result here. Okay, so this is the border plot of leg compensator. This is the design leg compensator. Uh, Plant, we know that it's the modified plant. A new modified compensated open transfer function, which is technical multiplication of G C and G hat S. This is the phases and the technically magnitudes. Okay, so 
Uh, let's look at the original phase margin, which is equal to 18 degrees, which we already computed previously. And if you look at the new phase margin of the compensated system, you will see that it is equal to uh, approximately uh, 47 degrees. Okay, so our requirement was approximately 45 degrees. Okay, but we added a fifth degree error, and as you can see, like it's not exactly 50, but it is like 46.5 and these errors are invalid too because some of the reasons because we use like an approximate location when computing the gain crosser frequency and at the end uh, we technically relied on the approximate border plot in terms of when the phase will reach the zero so if you for example pick here instead of 12.5 if you pick 15 seconds, your error will be most probably much more less than this. But this is fine because in general, the idea is in the phase margin is like uh, increasing the margin significantly such that we can have a cost effect on the uh, transit performance or robustness in terms of uh, delays and other kind of properties. Okay, so now if you remember in the phase lead case, after finalizing the design we show the border plus we show the gain margin which is good and then we show the step responses okay and this is the step response and it's somewhat different than what we obtained in the phase compensator okay so overshoot is similar so we can drop the overshoot from uh, 60 percent which is terrible to 25 percent it's kind of a substantial improvement okay we can even uh, go further with adding more phase margin but the problem is, original setting time is 7 seconds, new setting time is 16 seconds. Okay, so unlike phase lead compensator, phase lead compensator is reducing the setting time performance of the system. Now it's technically approaching its set state slower. It's kind of an expected result because it's a phase lag compensator. It's adding a lag to the system overall. Uh, but of course, it's uh, changing the phase margin positively. And the reason is that, as you can see, let's clean this. Okay. So phase margin is directly related with overshoot, but it's not re really related with the setting time performance of the system. Setting time performance is generally defined by the uh, gain crosser gain cross frequency of the system. Okay, this is the original gain crosser frequency. Okay, and this is the new gain crosser frequency. No, no, sorry for that. This is here, and this is here. Okay, so what we do is, if you design a phase that compensates it, it generally reduces the bandwidth of the system. As you can see, bandwidth is reduced. It's by a good margin. It's almost a decade, not, it's like, it's half a decade. Okay, it's a kind of a substantial uh, reduction in the bandwidth and bandwidth is directly related with the setting time of the system okay this is the main trade of a phase the compensator design is easier okay but it generally produces a, a reduced setting time and rise time performance in your system okay so in that case you can kind of think that phase the compensator better so yes if your setting time performance is important important if you want to improve it it's true but maybe in your system, setting time is not very critical. It's already satisfactory, okay? Because phasic compensator is easier to design. And one of the advantages is phasic is a high pass filter and phasic is a low pass filter. So if there is a noise in the system, which is entering, the, for example, in your measurement, phasic can filter these noises, of course, with the trade of slowing the system down. And if there is a noise, phasic compensator can attenuate the noise, which may not be very really like. Uh, like applicable or like even preferable for some of the systems. So there are trade-offs between phase it and phase it. They can both improve the phase margin. Okay. For some systems, phase it is better. For some systems, for phase it is better. Okay. So that's all I want to talk about compensator design. Analytical design of a leg compensator is very, very similar to this. And you can look at my lecture notes. And this is technically end of our frequency domain analysis of control systems. In the next couple of weeks, we will talk about state space analysis of uh, control systems.